This is part three for the Friday the 24th of January flashback Friday. We begin with question eight, another question on histograms. Calculate the width and the height of the bar representing the 20 to 40 category when we've been given information about the 50 to 60 category in terms of how wide and how high it is. So we need to find relationships between the values in the table and the two centimeter and eight centimeter width and height. Class width is directly influencing the width of each bar in a histogram. So the class width is a worthy thing for us to calculate in this situation. We have 20, 5, 5, 10, and 20. In the 50 to 60 category, we can see that the class width is 10, which means a class width of 10 is in direct comparison with the width of the actual histogram which is two centimeters. Our category 20 to 40 is 10, uh, sorry, 20 class width wide, which means it must be four centimeters wide if we're to keep the ratio going. The next piece of information we've been given is height. Now we can compare height to frequency density, or we can compare area to frequency, which I think is slightly easier since we have the frequency column already. The area of the 50 to 60 bar is 2 centimeters times 8 centimeters, so this is 16 centimeters squared's worth of area. We can clearly see a 1 to 2 ratio between the area and the frequency. Therefore, we would expect the area of the 20 to 40 category to be 6 centimeters squared. If it has a width of 4 and an area of 6, then it must have a height of 3 over 2, since width times height is equal to area. So the 20 to 40 category has a width of 4 centimeters and the height of 3 over 2 centimeters. In part B, we need to use linear interpolation to estimate the median cost. Linear interpolation is a technique for finding the median. And to do so, we need to be aware of the cumulative frequency values through the table so we can identify which category that we should work within. The cumulative frequency values are 12, 25, 50, 82, and 90, giving us 90 total offices, which does match the original number in the question. So we know we've not made a mistake at least. 90, the total number of offices, over 2 gives us 45, which means we're looking for the 45th unit in the data set. This will occur between the 25th and 50th pieces of data, meaning it's going to be in the 45 to 50 category. 45 to 50 category doesn't have any bound, uh, class boundaries, uh, sorry, gaps between the class boundaries of its predecessors or following categories, so there's no need to edit the category values. The median value placed in the center somewhere and against the 45th value of data. We also are up to 50 in cumulative frequency, which leads us to slight confusion as both of these values are 50. However, we start with a cumulative frequency value of 25 in this 45 to 50 category. So therefore we form the following fractions. We do the short upper distance divided by the long upper distance equals the short lower distance over the long lower distance. There are other ways of forming these fractions, but this is the simplest of the ways that I've found. We then rearrange and simplify, giving us 49 for the median. For question nine, we move to mechanics. We're told the total distance travelled during the motion by this velocity time graph is 900 metres. We should be aware that distance travelled on a velocity time graph is equal to the area contained within that graph. Therefore, we simply need to write an expression for the area of this shape and set it equal to the 900 units of distance travelled. This is a triangle, and the area of a triangle is a half times two perpendicular distances. We can see that this distance along the base is 90 units and we can see that the perpendicular height of the triangle is V. 
Therefore, a half times 90 times V will be the area of this triangle. Setting that equal to 900 units gives V is 20. The final, question 10, similar VT star graph, but this time with some different information provided. We're told the initial acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. Acceleration is the gradient on a velocity time graph, which means the gradient of the original, original part of that line is 2. Gradient, in this case dv dt, is equal to the change in y over the change in x. We can clearly see the change in y is 16 and the change in x is capital T. If we're told that the gradient in fact at that point is that location is 2, that makes capital T equal to 8. We then have to find the total distance travelled. As with the last question, this is equal to the total area underneath the shape, but unlike the last question, we now have a trapezium instead of a triangle. The area of trapezium is given by 1 half times the height between the parallel lines, which in this case is the 16, times by A plus B, which is the shorter parallel and the longer parallel distance. The longer parallel distance is 40, all the way from the origin to the final portion of the graph, and the shorter parallel distance is the distance between T and 30. Seeing as how T is 8, that distance is therefore 22. Putting this into our calculator, then gives, excuse me, then gives 62 times 8, which is 496 units of area, which is equivalent to the amount of distance travelled. Part 3 then says, find the average speed for the whole journey. Now, average speed is equal to distance over time. So, in order to find this, we simply need to take the total distance travelled and divide by the total time taken. Distance travelled we've just calculated as 496, and the total time taken is clearly 40 seconds, seeing as that's when the graph ends. This gives us an average speed of 12.4 metres per second.